Hi, YouTube family. Auntie is here. I'm Patty Jackson. I'm your auntie of pop culture. I love to say it's not cute. Not knowing. Now we're going to know. Let's start off with a hug. Come on. How you guys doing today? Yesterday, Thursday was crazy. I hosted a concert with Drew Hill, Tank, and SWV. Jazz has returned for this time for Drew Hill. There was Cisco, and there was a whole bunch of other people that I didn't know. One guy spoke to me like he knew me all my life, so I just had to go along with it. But in the back of my head, I was like, who are you? So then I get to work, and so people are like, who are all those people on stage? We don't remember them from being in Drew Hill. They put on a great show. SWV put on a great show, and this is such a great time for Tank. The music, the number one song in Can't Let It Show. Um, the music, the acting. This is a great time for him. And he was like so appreciative. When I talk about his music, his current music and music that he did years ago, he was on Barry Hankerson's Blackground label. Barry Hankerson is Aaliyah's uncle. He had R. Kelly. He had R. Leah. He's fighting with the Aaliyah estate, her mom, brother, and family. Tank has previous projects that are coming back out. Tony Braxton, who was on the label, has previous projects coming out on streaming. They're going to be available for streaming purposes. Aaliyah's music is going to start streaming on August 20th. It includes a 1996 album, One in a Million. Um, in 2001, when they released the Aaliyah album, a greatest hits compilation is coming and a project that Hankerson has been wanting to put out. It's, it was after she died, 16 new songs. Drake co-produced this project. There's Lil Wayne on it. There's Kanye West on it. The family didn't want this project. They want him to be cut totally from anything that's dealing with Aaliyah, but Blackground is his record label. He was her manager, so he kind of like got say. And we're going to start hearing and seeing some of these projects starting on October, uh, August 20th on streaming and it wrapping up with the releases by October. Mike Richards, the executive producer of Jeopardy, who has made himself the new host. They don't give a damn about Ken Jennings, LeVar Burton, nobody. He says, I'm going to do it. Well, they'd have found dirt on him. If we didn't know who he was yesterday, we know today. Years ago, back in 2010, Mike Richards was the co-producer of the game show The Price is Right. Well, he got in trouble for firing one of the pregnant models. This guy, Mike Richards, is going to be the new host of Jeopardy. Bill Gates, richest man in the world, says he regrets cheating on his wife. Melissa Gates got the heck out of there. She said, give me my money. You know, I think it's when you're rich, you, you're not, you don't want, you don't need to work things out. You're like, you know what? Mm -mm. We don't need to work nothing out. Just come on, give me my money. Give, give me my money. Just give me my money so I can leave. I think Bill Gates was caught up with Jeffrey Epstein and them shenanigans going on with the young girls. I knew when they broke up. I said, why are they breaking up? Irreconcilable differences is just nothing but a fancy way to say cheating. But he says he regrets. I'm sure he did because he had to give up a lot of money. Vanessa Bryant, the widow of Kobe Bryant, has settled the lawsuit with her mother. Her mother had sued Vanessa, claiming that she was an unpaid longtime personal assistant and nanny, and that she should have gotten paid. She was looking for $200,000. And she said that Kobe said he would take care of her for the rest of her life. Well, Vanessa said, uh-uh. He said he's going to take care of you. And Vanessa didn't want to part with any money. Now, they're not saying what it was, but did Vanessa, Vanessa have to give her mother money to go away? Because they said it's over. So I guess, you know, the mom can't sue her no more. For, for money. So she must have given her mother enough money to like, please go over there, sit down, and leave me and these four kids alone. At the movies, it's Suicide Squad. This version is much different from the one in 2016. You got Idris Elba stepping in as Bloodsport. You've got Margot Robbie, John Cena, Storm Reed, Viola Davis, 
Sylvester Stallone makes a cameo. You've got Pete Davidson from Saturday Night Live. What makes this one different? The Suicide Squad was always supposed to be, you show the misfits, a little sense of humor. It's a little different. Um, I think young people are going to really, really, really be amazed with this movie. you got to watch it closely. It's in theaters and it's on HBO Max. And what's the cool thing about HBO Max? They're not charging you extra when they stream movies that are also in theaters. But The Suicide Squad is out now. And they're saying that this one is just more fun and lighthearted and goes into the theme of what The Suicide Squad was. I want to make sure that I hit everything. R. Kelly's trial starts on Monday. So you know we're going to be having scoop on that. Megan McCain, y'all, today was her last day. <laughs> Everyone thought it was last week. It was kind of un uneventful. The other host looked relieved, like, can we get this hour over with? But she said it was a wild and eventful four years. It was, because, Megan, you was a spoiled brat. And every other minute you were saying, my dad, my dad, my dad. Reggae Jean Page. There is a strong chance, y'all, he may be the next James Bond. Think about this. Daniel Craig is leaving after No Time to Die. He's been doing it for the past 15 years. There has been this incredible push to have a person of color be James Bond. Everyone thought it was Idris Elba, but it took so long, he's kind of like aged out of the park. Reggae John Page is British. Person of color. He's 31 years old. He's the perfect, he fits the mold of what they're looking for, that, that sex appeal with James Bond. He became a star on Bridgerton, playing Duke, the Duke, uh, Simon, Simon the Duke. And he was a phenomenon, indeed. Is he going to be the new James Bond? He's already doing... Um, to Catch a Thief. He's doing a movie kind of like in the vein of it, of a, of a James Bond, but looks like he may be the front runner to play James Bond. And Jennifer Hudson, who is starring in the Aretha Franklin approved movie Respect that opens in theaters one week from today, says she's interested in doing a versus with Fantasia. Think about these two ladies' careers. Becoming stars on American Idol. But Jennifer Hudson gets booted. She was really treated wrong and judged wrong. Simon just didn't like her look, nothing. She got booted. But Fantasia went on the win. But Jennifer Hudson, she's one of the most successful people on American Idol. She's an Oscar winner. The movies have taken off. You know, she goes from movies to singing. She's starring in Respect. Who do you think would do better? I think both ladies would could use a shot in the arm as far as their career goes, especially depending on how is this movie Respect going to do in theaters. I've seen it. I'm not talking about it, but Marlon Wayans, he said, I've never, I've, I've never played the role like this, and he's very sexy. That's all I'm going to say because I really don't want to talk about this movie. I have a lot to say until after it opens in theaters after one week from today. But think about this, y'all. Who do you think would be good in a versus if it was between Jennifer Hudson and Fantasia? Both ladies could use a shot in the arm. Fantasia needs some new projects. I know she just had this baby, but she got to get on with her career. She needs really good producers. Both of them do. Can somebody call Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis to work with them? Um, you need a good producer because this is my, this is my humble opinion. Auntie thinks <laughs> that a lot of these young producers don't know what to do with a person who can really sing. I'm talking about really sing. I'm not talking about that stuff you put in the computer and you put in the voices together. I'm talking about women who can sing. In the movie Respect, Jennifer, it's Jennifer Hudson singing. You know, both her and Fantasia could sing, but who would do well in a square off of verses? Hmm. Let me know what you think. There's a weekend version that's coming. LaShawn well, Simon puts it together, so look out for that for more scoop. This weekend, I'm going through the comments. Yes, I'm going through the comments. I'm going to sit up 
in my recliner. I want to chill for real. I want to chill. I want to chill. I want to chill. I'm going through comments. I want to answer a lot of questions and it'll just give a nice kickoff for what we talk about on Monday. Give us a thumbs up if you like the videos. Have a great weekend. Check out the weekend edition. Leave a comment. Auntie's going through them all today. I'm telling you, I want to put my feet up in my recliner and just and just go through and, you know, answer questions and stuff like that. Thanks so much for joining us. We do this during the week. I'm your auntie of pop culture. I'm Patty Jackson. Hope it's the start of a good weekend. Thanks for joining me.